to take things at face value and what's most obvious. Face value is a bad pun in this situation, but I think you kind of try to go with what's most obvious and what's kind of clearest rather than sort of thinking it through too deep. I don't know. It, it's, I understand what you're you saying, that you can go down I, a rabbit that, that hole and never find your way out again. For me. Uh, it hasn't yielded too much truth for me, kind of trying to think it through too cleverly. Yeah, I see what you're saying, that you can kind of get stuck going down the rabbit hole and, yeah. and kind of never get out. Although that particular one, to me, always seemed so half-baked that the Russians would poison him with a poison that wouldn't kill him. And even his own campaign manager now is saying that he just has an illness and, and he decided to you know make up this story about how the Russian guys did him in. And then... Yushchenko turned around and accused his campaign manager of being the one who did the poisoning. And, like, it's pretty obvious this guy's full of it, isn't it? Well, uh, but that's Ukrainian politics. I mean, they're constantly switching sides as, you know, what happened with uh, Timoshenko and Yushchenko. And, and, you know, in a way that's so savage and wild that it makes even Russian politics look pretty tame by comparison. Yeah. Uh, but, but getting back to the poisoning, I don't, I don't think it was the Russians who did it. I have no evidence of that. I, I just look at it like this. There was, you know, there was an enormous amount at stake in that election in 2004, basically whether certain oligarchical clans would be able to keep and expand on all of what they owned or face possibly losing everything. Right. And, and you know, all, these oligarchical clans then have people within the security services. I don't think the Russians did it, I, I guess that's possible, just as it's possible that, you know, Yushchenko was poisoned himself or something. But I personally, I think the most obvious uh, and reasonable explanation is just, you know, everything was up for grabs. People's billions of dollars and property and, and political power over the country was up for grabs. And they tried to kill him and it didn't work. Or maybe they tried to disfigure him. I'm not sure. But, you know, not everything goes right in these things. Uh, it's the same thing with the Litvinenko poisoning. I'm, 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 uh, I, I don't buy into most of the conspiracy theories against Putin, but I'm pretty sure that, that this was the Russian security services that killed him. And, and they almost got away with it. I mean, there was the half-life of that poison. There was only a day or two left before it would have completely disappeared. They, you know, almost got away with it. But mis people make mistakes all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, now, um, uh, well, and see, I don't want to get too much into that one, too, because, you know, I, well, Justin Romando at AntiWar.com uh, has written quite a lot about that and has quite a bit different take. I don't really know what to make of it, but so we can let that go. I, I do appreciate what you're saying about politics in, in Eastern Europe and Russia and these places are, are so Byzantine that there's really no point in trying to delve all the way down to every little detail, sort of like the JFK assassination. You're never going to figure it out anyway. There's a hundred different stories, so forget it kind of thing, right? No, I, I don't think forget it. I, I, I've taken a position. I know a lot of people that I uh, admire and work with don't, don't agree with me on this. It's just, it's just from my experience being out there, but, you know, I agree. Look, taking that position then, I, the problem with taking the position that, that uh, it, it was pissed off uh, FSB people who poisoned Litvinenko for reasons that I think are pretty obvious when you I mean, had the similar situation, had you had a guy like that from, from Mossad, for example, and he was out in Iran calling, you know, the Israeli leader uh, uh, a pedophile and writing constantly against him, you know, he'd have been whacked also. And I just look at it, that's how I look at it. But in any event, yeah. the problem with taking that position is you wind up eventually maybe supporting the position of new Cold Warriors and people who want to get this new Cold War on. Uh, well, and those ought to be completely separate issues as far as that goes. And exactly, this is, yeah. this is, I want to I want to bring this back to the narrative uh, as compared to what really happened. As you said, uh, for whatever maybe various reasons, uh, Saakashvili invaded South Ossetia, which they say in the narrative was a breakaway province or whatever, but it's never really been part of Georgia. It was Stalin who made it that way. They've been basically autonomous since the end of the Cold War. Isn't that right? Well, uh, again, you know, these, these maps, uh, when, when we talk about history, you know, everybody and, and who owns what territory, it's uh, people kind of, um, people who aren't directly involved uh, sort of use whatever historical precedent is convenient for them. So, you know, the West uh, sees Kosovo as a completely exceptional, you know, situation, even though it's not. There are, 
you know, enormous amounts of uh, analogous situations um, around the world, including in the former Soviet Union, where you do have ethnic, uh, ethnic, you know, regions uh, or provinces of countries that have, you know, terrible relations with the center or, or have, you know, real serious historical grievances. I mean, I think if you ask a, an Ossetian whether South Ossetia should have been part of Georgia, obviously they'll say no. I, you know, I've, I've, I have a lot of Ossetian friends, and um, they've been telling me for years about the problems that they've had with the Georgians that go back at least a century, actually a couple of centuries. They'll, they'll cite for you, you know, genocides committed by the Georgians on the Ossetians, even though they're very small, uh, their numbers are very small. They'll, they'll cite old genocides from 100 years ago as if they happened yesterday. Um, so, you know, the, the reality is that if we're going to go in and bomb uh, Serbia and carve out an ethnically pure Kosovo uh, and, then, and then, you know, allow it to, to become independent and free, then we have no more argument in, anymore against, uh, the, for example, the Abkhaz and the South Ossetians who are in an absolutely similar situation. In fact, I think even with the Abkhaz, uh, which is another breakaway region uh, in the west of Georgia, you know, they probably have even a much better um, uh, case to make. They're, they go back centuries uh, in that region. They have a real functioning, you know, functioning government. They're even fairly autonomous from Moscow, the, the uh, Abkhaz region. that The Kremlin has sort of had a hard time controlling um, Abkhazia. I mean, there's this there's this fiction out here that Abkhazia is just some kind of puppet state, but it's really not the case. Um, so in any event, to, to answer your question, uh, you know, does, is South Ossetia historically part of Georgia? Uh, you know, based on the Kosovo precedent, no. I mean, you could even argue, you take the Kosovo precedent, you might even, never mind former Soviet Georgia, what about former Confederate Georgia? I mean, don't they have the right to secede <laughs> on the Kosovo model? Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, you know, but no, not if you ask uh, all the people who invested themselves, you know, morally, legally and everything else in this war, which is that this is a special case for whatever reason it makes. I mean, it's, it's right. some of the most idiotic circular reasoning I've, I've ever come across. And, and you know, I, I think for years after the Cold War, as the Cold War wound down and then the years afterwards, America and the Europeans behind it have got used to the idea that they can – they can do whatever they want in the world, and, and there won't be any consequences because nobody would, would mess with us. Nobody would think of messing with us. They need our billions in IMF loans. They need our goods, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think, um, you know, the chickens are coming home to roost on that. And, uh, um, you know, in some ways, the, the war in Georgia, if, if, there, if cooler heads prevail at all, uh, that's, that's hoping for a lot, but if cooler heads prevail at all, it might be a wake-up call to the West and to America that that when you bomb a country and you know change a map, that it's going to have consequences. It's going to blow back. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that kind of stuff is going to end now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Greg Palace talked about how Henry Kissinger was part of the team that came up with the plan to siphon all the oil out from under the Caspian Sea and all that back in the 1990s. And yet, I kind of like to cite him as a cooler head, at least relatively speaking. I've seen Kissinger on TV. And by the way, I hate saying this, so feel free to smack me down with whatever evidence you might want to summon. But uh, I've heard him say on TV, for example, look, people want to talk about uh, Vladimir Putin as some kind of new Stalin. Well, he could have just had the Constitution amended to run for a third term in power, and yet instead he stepped down to become prime minister. That sure is a strange path to dictatorship, if that's really what he's after here. And maybe it would be better to leave the rhetoric for the, the rubes out there watching TV, and for those of us wise men, when we talk about these things, maybe we ought to you know, ground our discussion in reality instead of the talking points we use to BS everybody else, you know? Yeah, well, again, this talk of the new Stalin is, I mean, these, these historical, um, you know, exaggerations and anal exaggerated analogies, they're, they're really dangerous and idiot they're, they're idiotic and they're dangerous because if he is a Stalin or a Hitler, then we need to go to war. I mean, what, how do, if he is Stalin or Hitler, I thought that was the whole lesson. So launch all your nukes right now, buddy, you know. 